It's Dave Jarhal once again for Punch Out Boxing. Pleased to be joined by friend of the show, John Trethaway, who is fresh from his show, should we just say, on Saturday night. Another one at the York Hole, another one under your belt, John. How did Saturday night go, first of all? Yeah, it was a really good show. Thanks, Dave. Good to talk to you. It's been a while. I've missed you. Um, it, it was a very good show. Sometimes it's not as good as the previous one or the one before. And you're always trying to reach new heights, etc. So sometimes I'm a bit like, ah, oh, it's not as busy as the one before. But it was busy. It was a good card with some good prospects on there that we're used to. Some very, very good debutants. And the main title fight itself. The last, the show before last at your call, which the title fight was between one of them was between Louis O'Doherty and Marley Mason, was one of the best fights I've ever seen live. Not just Sanic, because it was my own show, and I didn't think I'd be able to see much better than that. And then the headline of this Saturday was exactly the same. It was Louis uh, defending his southern area against Jeff Afori. Um, and it was an absolute cracker. I sat front row with quite a lot of people and they're all just like, John, I've not really seen a fight like this. So overall, a very good night on Saturday night. I mean, in regards to Louis O'Doherty, now he's, you know, he, he's been in some tough fights. Should we just say Saturday night was another tough one under his belt. He's got the win. Is If, if you look at it in this way, are you, you're pleased for him, no doubt as well, but are you also looking at him thinking, hang on, he's on the cusp now of being signed to a, a big promoter and, and you're afraid you might lose him because I know promoters do get like that, don't they, John, in terms of, you know, he's under our stable. How long before we let him loose onto the big scene? Is it is it a case of, yes, you'll be pleased for him, but you'll be sad to see him go as well? Is he is he more on the cusp of being signed up to a big promoter more than, sh should we just say, Joel Bartel? Or are they on the same sort of trajectory? A few questions there. We're not afraid when they sign with the bigger boys. I'm proud is the word, I'll be honest. I know there are some promoters out there who get a bit annoyed, get a bit lemon and a bit like stroppy about it. Well, there's levels in the sport of boxing, as we say, and there's levels of promoting level and managing level. So if we've helped uh, any uh, fighter on their journey towards bigger and greater things, I just sit there with pride. Are we a bit gutted when we lose them? Yes, because I've just told you that this lad's probably been in two, the two best fights I've ever seen on my shows and we've done over 40 shows now so you don't want to lose someone like that but clearly his talent he's going further he's now ranked number 10 in the country uh with regards to is he is he better than Joel Bartel I mean different weights they're very similar they both come out of two of the best uh gyms in the country they've got the best support and teams around them and they're both better than small hall or medium hall as you call it level shows so I, I would expect louis to move on we might have another fight or so with him he needs a rest now you said he's had some wars his last two fights have been absolute year fight of the year contenders i wouldn't be shocked if they're both in there at the end of the year for the nominations but he probably needs a little bit of a rest over the Summer. He's ranked number 10 now in the country. And when you look at the lightweights and you go up, you know, you're looking at top three or four, you're looking at lights of Mark Chamberlain, Sam Noakes, Maxi Hughes, you know, they're, they're elite names. So, yeah, let's see what comes next. He's he's had that belt and he's defended it. Uh, I'm sure they'll have an eye on an English title or something similar in the coming months. And if we're part of that, that's great. And if, if he moves on to a bigger TV platform, we'll say that we helped him get there. Absolutely brilliant. July 6th is almost upon us, John. I mean, this card is absolutely stacked to the brim. We're getting asked loads of questions in a good way as well. Not just about tickets, but can you tell me more? Who's fighting? Are certain fights, are they for real? You've climbed the top of the O2 as well. Promoting this, this massive event with, with Mark Nielsen. What, what more can you tell us? Well, first of all, has this event sold out? Does it need any more pushing? Yes, it has pretty much sold out, Dave. Now, you never know uh, the way that we operate, as all the other promoters do at a smaller level. It's not like a TV show on Sky Sports or BT where they advertise on those huge platforms and Joe Public go and buy the tickets online. So the money's then in the bank. So if you and I want to go and buy a ticket, I know you never need to because you're accreditation. But if we ever bought a ticket for a fight online, the money's in the bank, right? The way it works at our level, as you know, the fighters get their allocation of tickets, they go and sell it, and then we work out what they've done nearer the event day. Uh, but I've never had a show where pretty much, and I'm confident in saying this, every fighter on the card is asking me for more. And I don't have them. So if they're asking me for more, they haven't got any to sell, 
So I don't see why they would lie. And if they are lying, uh, we'll have a funny conversation about that fight week. And they wouldn't do that anyway. So um, I'm sure there will be the odd bit where someone pulls out, etc. And will you be able to get the odd ticket here or there? You can. But I'm having people DM me first time ever who aren't uh, friends or family of fighters us asking to buy tickets and i'm having to refer them to fighters because we don't have any tickets so we're excited about that and it costs a lot of money dave to put this show on at the o2 uh, obviously it's tm14 and priority boxing with mo prior we're up against nielsen boxing there's bragging rights up for grabs i can announce something on here now i haven't got it to show you but that we'll be fighting for i'm going to say the word inaugural is that the right word dave you're more intellectual than me fight zone belt so the winner on the night will get a nice shiny belt um, between us and the Nilsons, which clearly will win. Um, so that's all really good. Who's it's going on belt, talk Josh, Just on that, who's designed this belt? Because that sounds quite interesting. I, I, I wish I could show you it now. I've got a picture of it on WhatsApp. I'll send it to you after. It's designed by Dennis Hobson. Dennis Hobson's paying for the belt. Dennis Hobson's streaming it on Fight Zone. He's a huge part of the show as well. It is TM14 against Nilsson, but the three of us are kind of doing the show together. Uh, and Dennis is putting some uh, money into the show, which helps support us. So I want some of them diamond encrusted bits in there, but he ain't really listening. He ain't really listening to me much on that bit. But it looks wicked. The belt. It looks like a proper championship belt. And there, there is a little bit of needle. We don't need to pump it like you said. Um, the, in terms of tickets, but you'll you'll see an announcement next day or so on the belt that comes out. We'll certainly start stoking up the the teams. We had to wind out the teams because uh, I weren't too happy that some of my fighters were going over there. They with a bit of argument who's having what. Um, but look, on the night it'll be a great night. Um, we've got seven or eight at the moment, 50-50s, Dave. So when you think you put a show together at York Hall and you've got 10 fights, you might have one or two 50-50s where they're both ticket sellers in the title fight, for example, or an eliminator. But then normally the journeyman have to pay for, sorry, the home fighters have to pay for the journeyman, etc. So you only get 10 ticket sellers. On this, there's 20 ticket sellers. But you're paying for a show that costs double the amount of money. We announced a commentary team last week. I was a little bit early because I missed someone off, but we've got Johnny Nelson... Spencer Oliver, Denzel Bentley, he's always there, he's our boy. Paul Dempsey now, Elbrook and Stacey Copeland. You know, that's a team of six because on the night, it'll be a long afternoon and evening, I'm sure, with it. There's quite a lot of 10 rounders and eight rounders on there. Um, but the show itself is brilliant. I mean, if you want to go through any of the fights on it, each fight is one of them 50 50s flip a coin. And quite a few of them now are starting to shape up and get titles on them as well. So, really, really good. I mean, the fight that everybody when I say everybody everybody's talking to me about in terms of I'm not just talking about you know what was Usyk and 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 Fury and you know uh, Jack Cattrall and Josh Taylor and in the same conversation people are also asking me about Joel Bartel and Jordan Reynolds now again I'm not I'm not making this up this is what people are asking me um in in regards to that fight that fight could be a headlining event, shall we just say, um, on on one of yours and, and and Mark Nielsen's cards without the ten versus ten, without the five versus five, this this fight could be um, on a DAZN card. This fight could be on a Queensbury card, lower down the the pecking order, shall we just say, of a main event. So, is there any more talks between fighters about? How that fight, because there was a bit of needle, should we just say, between both fighters, Sean? Yeah, what? firstly, it's really great to hear you say that people are talking about that fight in the same kind of conversation as the aforementioned, before mentioned fights, which was the Catterall Taylor and obviously the Fury Usyk fight, because it's not of that level. But what we are excited about is people in the sport, yourself included, are talking about the fight because it is a top draw fight. Um, I agree with you. You know, we've got it. So I'm pleased with it. But that kind of fight, I'm surprised it wouldn't be on the TV. I think the thing is, both fighters are probably one fight away from a big TV contract. Well, certainly not telling Eddie or Frank or Ben Shalom or anyone else, uh, Sauerlands, what to do. But I would get those on a six fight promotional deal after maybe their next one. So the fact that they're jumping in together because it's the O2, because of the magnitude of it, I think the Indigo Owl is about 2,800 people, Dave. So if we've got all them in there, the exposure for them, as I said, it's on TalkSport, it's on Fight Zone. Uh, I've got a big sponsor on board. We've got Labbrooks on board now, which is great for us. Great exposure for them on that fight. As for the fight itself, you know, they sparred years and years ago. 
I don't really know what their opinions are on it. My understanding is there's about an eight year age gap. I think Jordan's 29 and Joel's 21. So when they sparred, Joel would have been a lot, a lot younger. I'm not really sure how that spar went genuinely. What I do know is the minute both fighters were asked for the fight, they went, yep. Now, quite often when I'm trying to make a 50-50 and it was me that made that fight, I'll get, oh, let me come back to you or the date might not be right or we're going a different route, maybe in two fights more. But immediately both their the managers, I spoke to Richard Maynard, yep, we'll have it. I spoke to Tony Peel with Jordan Reynolds, yep, we'll have it. They both believe in themselves. They've sold a bucket load of tickets between them. Um, clearly, we haven't seen the money in the bank yet, but I don't need to because they're both asking for more uh, and they've taken the lion's share of the tickets. So I expect it to be uh, an absolute brilliant fight. I can't tell you would win it. Um, Joel's obviously fighting for me, so he's a tier one four boy on the night, but... You know, whilst there's bragging rights between me and and, and Ace against uh, the Nilsons, ultimately we just want a great show. So whoever wins, good luck to them. But whoever loses, I'd still take them on a promotional contract as well. For that reason that you've said, maybe it's bigger than the level it's at. You know, sometimes people fight a bit earlier. Same with Louis O'Doherty when he fought Marley Mason. Everyone was like, John, you're getting that too early. That might have been an English title, but I got it at a southern area. Doesn't mean that Marley won't be back, which he will. Uh, and he'll be he's back out on the O2 in another good fight. So let's watch that fight. But that's the big one on that night, yeah. In terms of aspiration, John, I mean, look, you you're at the the O2, sorry, the Indigo O2 on uh, on July the sixth with Mark Nielsen. Where, where where do you go next in terms of taking the show on the road? Do you do you eventually take it to the Midlands? Do you do Manchester? Do you do a tour of Scotland? Do you do another Indigo esque? type of venue i mean what what is the aspirations because it's not your swan song let's be honest you know there are going to be more shows but it feels like this is on the verge of again opening the, the door to something else so what what's the what's the ambition next good question so i like going on the road in answer to your question and like location what you have to realize as much as i'd love to go and do a show in birmingham manchester Scotland, Ireland, it doesn't really matter where it is. You need to have the connections and the full card. We don't manage or promote fighters in those regions or towns or cities, which makes it harder to just rock up and go, I'm putting a full card on. We're associating in London. We're based in London. I know there'll be haters out there that aren't from London, but London's the biggest city in the country and there are a world of talent in London. I was with Dennis Hobson at the weekend because he came over and streamed the show and put it live on for us on Fight Zone. And he was like, John, you've just got so much footfall. You're moaning that this show isn't that busy, but yeah, it was still really busy to him. But I'm used to it being busier. He's like, you seem to have so many different fighters you're using because we're based in London and there's a plethora of fighters, if that's the right word, in London and the home counties like Essex, Kent, Surrey, etc. Um, would we go on the road and do some bits? Yes. Uh, with regards to the O2, we've already provisionally got dates booked with them. Uh, we need it to work. There's no point sort of like booking in loads of dates and trying to run before you walk because we haven't actually had the show. Uh, all signs at the moment would suggest it's going well, and I'd expect that to happen. There's always sort of like uh, bumps in the road. Something will happen on certain fights, who knows? Um, but we've got a world of people who want to get on the show as well, as you can imagine. So I'd imagine we'll do uh, quite a bit more with the O2. What I'd like to see is those that fight for TM14 and Nielsen Boxing, because we're working with them at the moment, and they're great people to work with. There is a little bit of sort of like, we want to be better than them, but they're very professional, and they're friends now. But actually, those that come and fight on our shows at your call, why wouldn't we have the opportunity for them to go on that bigger platform every six months or so, so that they can say, do you know what? We're going the bigger fights. Uh, so that kind of will be the plan. As for other stuff coming up, there are some other stuff. It's not necessarily TM14 as much, but I'm going to be involved in some big plans abroad. There's a few cards coming up where um, I won't let the cat out of the bag because there's some press release, I think, tonight from another promotion, promoter that I'm working with. But we'll probably take some fighters abroad, uh, do some kind of prize fighter style tournaments in one country, do maybe a, a 5v5 in another country, that, those kind of things. But yeah, keeping busy is, is the key thing and keeping the brand awareness out there and looking after people. You know, some of these fighters, if I ring them up and go, do you want to come and fight with us? I won't say the country, uh, all paid for. You're getting a purse. You know, you're the home fighter, even though we're in another country and you've served us well. I'm sure they would be thinking, yes, please, John. So keep them busy.